everyone. Contemporary morality tends to elevate the right to choose above every other value. It finds offensive the traditional teaching on the sanctity of human life, which has been part of the common morality in Western societies. This moral outlook is having many profound effects. It has desensitised many people to the evil of abortion and it has also predisposed many to support euthanasia. Euthanasia aims at ending a life judged to be no longer worth living, either because of suffering or because of presumed indignity or poor quality. The aim is accomplished either by a direct action, such as administering a lethal injection, or by depriving a person of medical treatment to ordinary care in order to bring about death. An essential defining characteristic of euthanasia is the intention to end life, that is, to kill. It is therefore completely different when a doctor uses drugs in order to alleviate pain, even when doing so may hasten death as a foreseen result. The doctor's intention is not to kill, but to relieve pain. Efforts to introduce legislation to allow active euthanasia, such as giving a lethal injection, or assisted suicide, such, such as lead, leaving lethal pills for the patient to take themselves, have so far failed in this country. There is a risk, however, that euthanasia could enter by the back door as a result of certain court decisions and law commission proposals. These appear to sanction not active but passive euthanasia, that is, intentionally terminating life by the withdrawal or denial of treatment. Clearly, life need not be preserved at all costs when a person is already dying. Medical treatment though not basic nursing care, can and should be withdrawn after appropriate consultation and agreement when it is futile or imposes an excessive burden on the patient. To allow a person to die in these circumstances is not euthanasia. However, when death is imminent and inevitable, a person can morally refuse treatment that would only secure a precarious and burdensome prolongation of life. Such a refusal is not the same as suicide, but simply an acceptance of the imminence of death. But what if death is neither imminent nor inevitable? Suppose a doctor were to withhold insulin from a young unconscious diabetic with the intention of bringing about death because the doctor thought the patient's life was not worth living. That would be passive euthanasia. Now, if the doctor were deliberately to withhold insulin in order to assist in carrying out the patient's previously declared wish to end his life, now that would be assisted suicide. Court judgments such as that in the Tony Bland case, we're going back to the 80s here, already appear to permit passive euthanasia in certain situations. Furthermore, the government is about to consult on law commission recommendations to overhaul the law relating to decision making in respect of mentally incapacitated adults. As drafted, these proposals would appear to enshrine in statute some of the disturbing precedents already set by the courts. They appear to be so widely drawn as to permit the withdrawal of treatment in certain circumstances, not only on the basis that it is futile where death is imminent or inevitable, but even in order to terminate life because the person's life is judged by others to be no longer worth living. Additionally, the Law Commission proposal would appear to give statutory force even to suicidally motivated advance refusals of medical treatment. Although suicide has been decriminalised, assisting a person to commit suicide is still a criminal offence. So it should remain. Thank you for listening. And God bless you all. Oh, oh.